child C passed the parcel. There was a news article that made me very angry about vulnerable children being treated like cattle. I've written out many responses, but decided there's only one way to truly answer it with facts. When I met child C for the first time, she was sitting in one of the rooms with other young person. She hadn't really done anything wrong other than follow the other young person while they got themselves into trouble. Staff had come to me and said they were concerned that child C was spending time with young people at risk of exploitation. The other young person in the room, who was used to being in this situation, was sliding around on a chair with wheels, being loud and telling everyone to go away. Child C was sitting quietly in the chair. She looked very shy and she looked a little bit shell-shocked. I walked into the office and glanced over at Child C. I directly addressed the other young person who had been on my book for a while and informed them of the consequences of their actions. I turned to Child C and done, done the same. The next day I sat with Child C, blonde female, no makeup, about 13 years old. She could barely make eye contact with me and spoke in almost a whisper. She seemed to have almost a smirk on her face, which I learned over time was the face she made when she was nervous. She was a child in care from out of the area, been in care for a while, limited contact with mum and family. She had been in a few different placements due to behaviour. When she spoke, I almost went to call her carers and tell them to send her back, get her out of this area, because she was so naive, so trusting. I started some work with her around exploitation and what it looked like, but she started slipping. She had been drawn into a group that housed a mixture of high-level concerns for being a victim of CSE and those that we knew to have exploited young people. She started to wear makeup to school, not loads, just enough to make a statement. Normal teenage experiment, I hoped. Her language started to change. She started to speak in the same street slang as many of the others. Understandable, many teenagers do this. It was so false and empty from her lips. She would forget to use it during conversations and then catch herself and slip back into it. Whereas the other young people I work with, it was very natural. It was who they were. She started ha hanging around with a group of boys that were a concern. Wait, let me take that back. They directly are no concern, but their elders, they are the concern. And there has been many girls and boys that have started at this low level and then get passed up. And then you lose them. It happened a few gates few years ago of a girl passed up and failed by many people but that's another story child c was changing she was now angry and defiant she was acting out asking for help without saying a word and i documented it we all did i went up against a social worker this one time there had been an incident and child c said she would run away if no one would listen to her i kid you not i was begging her social worker to come and see her i said this was a high concern that if we didn't get a handle on this right now, we would pay the price. And I was right. It often makes me sad how often I'm right. The social worker never came that day. And when she did, I found myself arguing with her about the risk this child was at. She told my boss I was overreacting, that child C was not in danger. My boss backed me and made statements to say that they, we were scaremongering. Out of this came a full-on row and official statements that made... My people have to pull out big levels of power, big statements. It was clear that schools were struggling to keep child C and other children that were in care from out the area safe. It was discussed and decided that we would not take any more for children in care into the schools. For one reason and one reason alone, that we could not keep them safe. And one of the main reasons we could not keep them safe was because people were not listening. Child C had been brought out of the area. Despite the area she was brought to being highly deprived, gangs and exploitation throughout. Oh wait, no, 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 no. It was all denied. But deny something that does not mean it's not true. So someone decided it'd be a good idea to bring a 13-year-old child in care who'd already been through many placements to an area when exploitation is high, where children are known to be groomed, where there's operations and task force to battle it. Someone thought that would be a good idea to bring her here. A year later, after all the warnings, all the times we were told we were scaremongering and making things up, she became the victim of exploitation. Social services could see that they would have to move her out of the area, but the damage was done. You can take her where you want now. She will seek out exploiters. She will be attractive to them and they will seek her because she was not kept safe despite so many warnings. 
I don't cry often. It's not who I am. But I held back tears when I watched Child C break the other day. I watched what was once a naive little lost girl lashing out an angry shouting, fam this and fam that, darkness in her eyes. I held back tears as she was led away knowing that she'll be passed around somewhere else now. It's not her fault. It's our fault. The adults, the professionals. Passed around by the care system. The same way she'll be passed around by her exploiters, like a piece of meat going to the highest bidder. 